everyone, and thanks for joining us at the Solid Cactus Call Center Customer Service Webinar Series. Today's our third webinar. We're sorry we're starting a little bit late. We had a few technical difficulties, but we're ready to get going now, and we appreciate you hanging on there. I have with me today Donna Wirtz, who is our senior sales consultant for a senior for the call center. Donna, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine, Greg. I hope everyone's well. Good. And I also have with me Katrina Domkowski, who is the manager of our call center. Hi, Katrina. Hi, Greg. How are you today? Good, Katrina. And my name is Greg Kosicki. I'm the senior director here of call center operations. And let's get started here. So, Donna, tell us a little bit about why customer service is so important after the sale of the product. You know, Greg, it is all about prompt attention and contact. You just want to make sure that your customer understands we received your order, we're processing it, and we're going to ship it right out to you. Excellent. You know, customer and service doesn't stop once you've made the sale. Um, if you have proper procedures in place, you may win a customer for life. That's true, and Donna, for those of you who have joined us in some of our previous webinars, one of the things that we went over is that the Harris Interactive Group, which does a lot of surveys concerning consumer behavior and customer service, they told us that 86% of customers quit doing business with the company due to, due to bad customer service. Now think about it. Just four years ago, that number was 59% of customers would quit doing business with you for bad customer service. So the numbers really jumped up. People know what they're looking for. They know that customer service provides them value. And we also have seen that customer service is something that consumers are willing to pay for. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? In today's webinar, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to provide you with some tips on how to provide good customer service post-sale. You know, what do you want to do if an order is pending? Uh, you want to contact the customer ASAP no matter what the reason is for the pen. A best practice does dictate that the customer should be contacted within 24 to 48 hours max. Mm -hmm. CBV issue. Sorry about that, everyone. I guess I didn't realize my headset wasn't working quite well. Um, to expand on a little bit of what Donna was saying, what would cause an order to pend? Um, that could be several things. One of, the, one of the big issues we see in our call center is um, AVS issues, which AVS stands for Address Verification System. This is basically um, a numerical check that's going to verify the billing address that your customer provides to you against what their, comp their credit card company or financial institution has on file. Um, another reason could be a declined credit card. You know, in these days, people are, are very quick. They're in a hurry. They're trying to just put their credit card number in, you know, very quickly. They might, you know, hit 2013 instead of 2012 for the expiration date. So that could also potentially cause an order to go into pending status. Or, you know, the most common is, you know, your item is out of stock. You don't have anything to ship. So obviously, you've got to put that order somewhere, you know, until you're, you're ready for it. Yeah, and Katrina, what we see a lot, and, and for everybody listening, Clients that we take on here at the call center, when we talk to them about pending orders and what they do, or even AVS issues, a lot of the clients tell us, and this may not be you, but a lot of them tell us we don't worry about pending orders. We don't worry about AVS issues. We let the system check them, or we just let them go and let the orders disappear. Right, and you know what? That, that's a big risk for our um, merchants as well as customers. You know. By not checking and caring about fraud orders or pending orders, rather, you're opening yourself up to you know, the potential liability, in addition to the fact that it kind of gives the perception to your customers that you just don't care, it's just not their money. Um, so you, you definitely need to be concerned about pending orders. Um, there's opportunity for you and for your customers to pick up. Okay. One, another issue is shipping orders are promptly. You want to deliver what you're promising to your customers. Um, if your customers are paying for their shipping, or even if you offer free shipping, send out the order. Again, when you promise to, best practice is to note the expected processing time and anticipated delivery time. If the order is going to be delayed, communicate that with your, your customer. And I know, Greg and Katrina, you have a lot to 
um, contribute to this topic as we see these calls coming into the call center all the time. Yeah, unfortunately, right now we are a give it to me now society, and we know that everybody gets things into in, in almost uh, instantly. Excuse me. You want to know information, you log on to the internet and you look up the information. If you want to buy something, you go on the internet and you quickly buy it. People want to know information immediately today. I'm one of those people, so I have to be honest. When I order something, I'm looking for an email telling me that they understand that I ordered it and letting me know how many days it may be while it's in processing, maybe when it's going to ship. I just need to know that information, and I like to see that information as quickly as possible. You know, Greg, you bring up a great point there. Um, you know, as you said, you want to know if your order is going to be delayed. And, and my advice to merchants on this, you know, a way to provide great customer service after the sale, even when you're delivering bad news, like, you know, your, your product's delayed and we're not going to have it for two weeks, is to make sure that the tone of the email is correct. Make sure, you, you know, you're coming across in your email as apologetic, your understanding. Um, you, know, you know, you don't know if this product that a customer ordered is, you know, the make or break, you know, will you marry me gift of the century for, for their spouse. Um, so, so, you know, you want to sound apologetic. You want to give the customer options. Let them know, you know, here's where we stand. Your order is, is back ordered from the manufacturer for two weeks. If you'd like to keep this order and I'll ship it as soon as it comes in, maybe offer them some options, like a discount on, on this order or a free expedited shipping. Or, you know, offer them, you know, I see you ordered the, the blue T-shirt. Would you like the red one instead? Give the customer options. But, again, the, the, the biggest thing is when you do notify and communicate with your customers, your tone has to be apologetic and understanding. One of the biggest things we teach our agents here is empathy. It's probably the most important soft skills that a customer service representative could have is you want to make sure that the customer understands that you can relate to their issue and that you're willing to help them with that issue. That goes a long way in a customer's mind. So tell me, Katrina, are we going to send emails every single day to these customers? No, no, Greg. Every day would be a little bit excessive. Um, my advice is to, you know, notify your customers initially of the delay and set, give, give them expectations. Tell them, you know, we expect your product to be back in within three to five days or two to four weeks. Give them a time frame. And then once that time frame has exceeded, then it's time you need to email them again. You know, I'm sorry. I, told, I know I told you last week that we'd have your product in five days. The manufacturer experienced another delay. You want to don't over-communicate, but set expectations, and then once that time frame has run out, set new expectations. Okay, great. Thank you. This is another big one that we do see in our call center. Send your email tracking if it is available as soon as you can. Um, if tracking isn't going to be provided to the customer, just let them know that that's something that will not be provided. Your customers want to know where their shipment is. One of the biggest call types, again, we receive is, where's my order? And we see a lot of, um, you know, you find the people, they just ordered it yesterday, they want it right now in their hand. <laughs> That's not always the case, as, as Greg had mentioned before. Um, but you can really reduce the amount of time you're spending on the phone with these kind of call types by just simply advising your customers ahead of time. This is really when you should expect your order. And I know, again, Katrina would like to contribute to this. Yeah, thank you, Donna, exactly. Um, just to kind of elaborate on what you're saying, um, for merchants who do ship United States Postal Service, I've seen this 100 times within our own call center. There's a little bit of a conf with confusion with that because USPS will provide a delivery confirmation number, which will show you that the package was delivered and signed for on, on a such and such date. But that again, that's delivery. That's after it's in your hands. Whereas, you know, FedEx or UPS or DHL will provide real-time tracking updates where you can log on and see, okay, my package is in Rhode Island. Okay, now it's in Pennsylvania. Um, if you do use USPS, make sure you're, you're educating your customers, whether it's on the website, in their autoresponder and email notification. Somehow make sure that they understand that the, tra the number that they're receiving isn't a tracking number, but it is a delivery confirmation number. Because we do receive a lot of calls from that in our call center where someone will ship a product to USPS, a customer will receive an email saying, hey, your product shipped, here's your information, and they'll think that's a tracking number. Then they'll go onto USPS's website and they'll see, you know, no information to be found, and that just instantly throws up a red flag for a customer. You know, it makes them think, you know, did my package really get shipped out? Did I receive a fraud email? Is someone trying to fish my, my account? Um, so let them know, you know, educate your customers. USPS's delivery confirmation, 
uh, UPS, FedEx, DHL is tracking number, and there is a difference with those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even the, the even when merchants do send out tracking information, uh, Katrina, sometimes customers don't realize that they did receive the email. And what do we need? What do you normally tell the agents, and how do they educate customers on where to find these emails? Um, generally, we actually we will encourage customers to um, to check their spam folder or their junk mail folder because sometimes if they haven't added your domain as a, a friend list or as a safe sender list, it may get flagged as um, as a potential spam email. Um, now, regardless, when a customer calls in and says, you know, I didn't receive my tracking information, above anything else, we're always going to provide them the tracking information that you provide to us. Um, but we will also educate the customer and let them know, you know, generally these are sent via email. If you haven't received it in your inbox, you might want to check your spam folder. And then we'll also, again, go another step further and tell them, you know, add this domain name to your uh, safe sender list. That way this doesn't happen again. Yeah, it looks like we're giving merchants a lot of good ideas on how not to have calls come into the call center. And it's, it's not that we don't want calls to come into the call center, but understand we want to teach and give some ideas on how to best run your business through your customers. Exactly, Greg. And, and you know what, whether you use an in-house customer service team or you use a call center, every call is going to cost you money. It's a cost of doing business. So we're, we're trying to educate merchants on ways to kind of save costs. You know, it is a tough economy. We understand that everybody's trying to look for a way to cut corners without really cutting corners. So, we're the, you know, that is our goal is to educate all of our merchants in our webinars this week. Very good. Okay. How do you handle back orders? Um, if an item is back ordered or any kind of order is back ordered, advise your customer as soon as possible. Uh, you may want to offer an alternate selection or even a discount. Um, we want to just, you know, give you a couple little tips on this slide itself. Um, one thing would be updating your site. Uh, Donna, I couldn't agree with you more on that statement. Um, if, if you've got an item that's back ordered and you've, you know, you've notified a customer that, oh, hey, it's not available, and some customer goes to your website and still sees that available for purchase, that throws up red flags for customers. So the first thing when you find out a, a product is back ordered is you need to update that website to reflect that information. Mm -hmm. And the next one would definitely be send them an email. Again, and we, we, we touched on this just a moment ago, send them an email. Give your customer a time frame as to when the back-ordered or delayed shipment is going to be in. Um, you know, if that time frame exceeds, notify them again. Give your customer options. Let them know, you know, we don't have this. We have something similar. Would you like to switch your order out? Always give your customers options when the fault is, of, you know, is not theirs. You know, the next item being call your customer, you might be noticing the tone of this webinar, prompt attention and contact. So you want to call your customers as well. You definitely want to follow up with that personalized phone call. Absolutely. Just by calling your customer, in addition to sending them an email and updating your website, that call adds just that personal touch. And it gives you the opportunity as the merchant, as a store owner, to really care about your customers and, and understand what's important for them. You know, by making that phone call, you might learn that, you know, the product that's back ordered on your website is, you know, is actually being ordered in bulk to, to send over to the troops in Afghanistan for care packages. Um, or you might learn that, you know, that this, this person's having a really bad week, you know, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong, and, and this product being missing is, is just the tip of the iceberg. And just, you know, just talk to your customers, feel them out. Um, a, a kind personal voice is really key for customers. Um, it gives them an opportunity to vent without really feeling like they're complaining and to offer you feedback. But again, it also it also gives them a friendly tone, lets them know that you really do care about their order and you want to help them. Yeah, customers have a need to and feel it, almost a, a, a kinship with their vendors and people that they buy things off of. There's a, a group called the Peppers and Rogers Group who in 2009 put out a study that said 81% of companies with strong customer service competencies for delivering customer service are outperforming their rivals. Let's remember, even though you have a product for sale on the website, it may be a product that your customers can buy on another website. It may be a product they can buy from a brick and mortar store. You need to build a competitive advantage against your rivals. Building that competitive advantage could be through your customer service. When people go to buy items, they're checking reviews. They're checking your site out. They want to know if people are getting good customer service from you. By having that competitive advantage, 
you can beat your rivals every time. Absolutely, because you're offering them something your competitors aren't. So your customer service has to be top notch from product questions to making sure that that order gets to your customers promptly and in safe condition. I mean, the last thing your customers want is a banged up, torn up box as well. I mean, of course, some of those situations are going to be out of your hand, but it's going to be your fault, not UPS's, not DHL's, not the post office. It's going to be your fault when that item comes to them damaged. So when that customer calls you, apologize and work with the customer to resolve the situation. This is a big one. Um, we get questions about this all the time from all of our clients. Um, I'm fraud. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, what is providing good customer service have to do with this topic? Uh, well, if you learn how to detect fraud and prevent someone from getting ripped off, you may gain potential customers' trust. Um, right, because remember, a part of fraud usually means that somebody's purchasing something on someone else's credit card. That means you're going to get you're going to get a customer who's calling you and asking you why you billed them, why is there a charge on their credit card, mm -hmm. what are you going to do about it, and how are you going to give them their money back? I mean, in, in our administrative area, when we review things for clients, uh, I can tell you that we spot well over $3,000 worth of fraud a month that we stop orders going out. And that could be anything from uh, a very simple example I'll give you is that one of our garment clients accidentally put out on their website that they were selling a piece of clothing for $0.27 cents instead of $27. Well, a savvy customer saw that and immediately went and ordered 20 pair. So we were able to catch that order as it went through. We noticed it. We saw that there was something wrong with the order, that 27 pair of pants was costing a very minimal amount. We contacted the client back. We were able to let them know that this was happening. And we were able to talk to the customer and let them know that it was an error on the site and stop that order from going through at such a cheap price. So that's just one instance, and, and I know Donna and Katrina have several other that they could talk about. Yeah, well, you know, when I was writing and um, putting together this webinar, I went right to our virtual office team. Um, really, they are top-notch. They are experts when it comes to this stuff, just from working with so many different clients and their back-end systems and you know, doing their own research to help our clients find out what, you know, what would you look at? You know, what would cause any kind of red flag for you when it comes to fraud? Because you want to be a good merchant. You want to be good to your customers. You also want to be good to everybody else out there. Because let's be honest, who wants somebody to take our credit cards and just use it willy-nilly? You don't want that. You want to make sure that you're protected. So what they did is they sat down and they wrote a list of issues or things to look for when it comes to detecting fraud. So here are some of the things to look out for when processing your orders. As you can see on the screen, I have three main bullet points. Uh, the first one being the billing, shipping, and IP addresses are all different. Mm -hmm. Now, does this mean that they're all fraud? No, it doesn't. But it says to you, I should check this. You want to call the billing phone number. You want to confirm with that person that did you authorize this? Is this something that you legitimately want? Uh, the second being high price item. Okay, you see all of a sudden an order coming through for fifteen thousand dollars, and that's not something you're used to. Pen the order and call the person and verify all of the information. Um, Greg had just mentioned uh, one client of ours. He's a garment merchant. Ironically enough, there's another story with this client. It just happened to be well, he just came on board with us, and I, I don't know. I, I don't. We're not really 100% sure what he had going on, but he had a little bit of a mess of an order, um, and uh, someone was lar ordering a large amount of this particular item, which was really high dollar item. 
Um, so what they did was they're looking and they you know use Google Maps to see if the ship to was a hospital or a doctor's office. And it was it going to a freight forwarding company? Um, they actually turned out that it was a fraudulent order. So we saved our merchants a good deal of money by just using these basic practices to, to check the orders. Agreed. And, and Donna, just to, to kind of elaborate on what you're saying there, um, when, we, when Donna's mentioning, you know, if, if you've got a gut feeling that something may be fraud, pick up the phone and call the customer. We by no means are encouraging you to good pick up the phone and accuse the customer, but you can position this to, to your, your consumers of, you know, we noticed this, this order. It's a little different than what we normally get. We've noticed that the billing and shipping address are completely different. You know, you're billing to, to Massachusetts, you're shipping to Maryland, and the IP address where the order was placed was in Florida. We just want to make sure this is a legitimate purchase. And your customers will really gain a level of respect for you like that. You took the time, A, that you even noticed their, their, that their order had, you know, different, different states associated with it. Just, you know, as, as long as you don't take the accusatory tone and as long as you act like you're concerned, we just want to make sure that this is a legitimate purchase on your credit card. That's key right there. It's building a good rapport with your customers, but it's also saving yourself some time and effort. It's saving you the financial loss for your company because you've now shipped out product that you're not going to get reimbursed for. And it gives you a sense of stability to your other to your customers when you talk to them and validate information. They they know that what they've done is accurate, they've ordered the right product, and they know that you're watching out for them. Agreed. And and you know, Greg, just to kinda of add a little antidote in there, um, not not too long ago, maybe a little bit more than a year, I, my, one of my credit cards had actually gotten um, compromised and it was uh. stolen. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, I, there, was two, there were two different charges on there, one from a vacuum company and one from a camping company. The vacuum company shipped an $800 vacuum on my credit card to some vacant warehouse in New York City without even uh. questioning it. And I can't tell you how upset I was to find that out, whereas especially when I heard from the camping company, they said, no, we realized that you had three different addresses on here, a different billing, a shipping, and an IP address for as far as states go. We didn't ship it. That, that saved me such a headache of having to go and hunt down, you know, a, an $800 uh, a t camping set of, in addition to a vacuum cleaner. So it, it really does build um, rapport with your customers. Even, even if they're not an existing customer, that will give them a level of respect because I can promise you that I went all over the Internet and blogged about the camping company who did not ship my fraudulent order. I was I was praising them for their their ability to detect that and save me the headache. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that gives a good name brand out there for that company. People recognize that. People see that. They read it. It's on the internet. Think about it. One of the things we do when we first bring a client on, and they're doing work through our virtual office team, is we actually review how their processes are and we look at their best practices or what they're doing versus what we consider to be best practices in this field. We can do that for clients and we can do that uh, for people who'd like us to just review it and see how well your back-end processes are working. And we don't mind doing that. Uh, sometimes it means that we don't get as many services for the client as we'd like, uh, but it also means that our client is operating much more efficiently and they're doing business better. And that's our whole goal, is to partner with small to medium businesses and make sure that they're operating better. So Greg, you know, we you do have that up, available. You bring up a great point there, Greg. Um, you know, being a merchant, you've, you've created your policies, you know your store in and out, you know your products in and out, but you've, you're so close to the issue that you almost, you can't see the woods before the trees kind of a situation. So, you know, if you contact Solid Cactus, you can absolutely call us um, and ask us, you know, take a look at my policies. Do you think I'm at risk for fraud? And, and we're, you know, we're more than willing to look at them because, you know, we have that more of an objective view. It's not, um, you know, we're not so far into your policies and your products that that's all we can see. And we'll offer suggestions to you such as this, you know, do you have your AVS, um, the back end of your system set to verify the addresses? Do you have it set to verify the CVV code on the cards, which is a tool that helps you understand that the card is actually in your customer's hand. Um, you know, we'll offer you all of these different suggestions, and whether or not you want to take take us up on them, that's you know, that's your choice. But we can definitely make recommendations to um, help protect your business from fraud, from um, just, just from having that liability. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one thing that uh, 
you also, when checking for fraud on your system, is verify any international IP addresses. Um, it's better to be safe than sorry. I mean, I know a lot of clients of Solid Cactus and other companies that aren't necessarily our clients, but they're e-commerce merchants, they ship overseas. You just want to proceed with caution, okay? Yeah. So I guess what we're trying to really get to here is a bottom point is the service, the customer service, and being there for your customer doesn't stop once the sale is made. That's just the beginning of customer service. You've gotten the customer to buy your product. They like your website. They like what they see. They like your pricing. They like your policies. It doesn't stop there. Once they buy the product, that's when your customer service starts. That's when you can build your competitive advantage against your rivals. Yeah. Yeah. So, Don, I want you to talk to about bring the next slide up and let's talk about an offer we have for for the attendees. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to open up the question and answer box for you. So you can please ask any questions you'd like and our talented presenters will be glad to answer them for you. Um yes, everybody. Um standard solid cactus webinar protocol is all attendees are offered special pricing for our services. Um, so if you want to give me a call, my email address and my phone number is up on the screen. Give me a call. We'll talk about your needs, um, see what kind of pricing that we can offer you for our services. Or even if you would like to schedule that free evaluation that Greg and Katrina talked about, there's my number. Give me a call. And what I'll do is I will schedule that evaluation for you. All right. We've got a question starting to come in. so. First one is uh, you mentioned fraud. So I don't want to accuse my customers of fraud, but I do get a lot of orders with questionable data. What should I do? How do I deal with that? Uh, I'll answer that one, Greg. Um, one of the first things that I want to recommend for merchants um, is to make sure that you have the settings in the back end of your store set to verify AVS, which again stands for Address Verification System. What AVS does is if a customer puts in 123 Main Street, any town, you know, PA 12345, the AVS is going to verify the numerical part of that address. So it's going to verify the 123 on your street address and your zip code. It's just another way to help make sure that the person who's using the card knows where the billing address on that card goes. It, that, that's almost always a dead giveaway of, you know, a potential fraud order. Another, um, another setting you'd want to turn on in the back of your store is your CPV setting. That, again, is card verification value. That's the little three-digit number on the back of your credit card, usually in your signature strip. Now, the benefit of this that proves that the card is in someone's hand versus just copying, you know, the the 16-digit account number and expiration date from, you know, uh, a receipt somewhere. This proves mm -hmm. that that card is in your hand. Um, that that's a good way to prevent fraud. Okay. One of the big things we see um, in call center with fraud orders, or what appears to be potential fraud orders, are AVS mismatches. Now, the most common thing is a customer will invert their billing address and their shipping address. Um, you will generally get an AVS decline if they have a PO box for their billing and their shipping address is a physical street address. All you really need to do is call your customer and just ask them, you know, this is what you listed for your billing address. Is this correct? And then nine times out of ten, the light's going to go off in your customer's head and be like, oh, no, you know, I meant to, I put them backwards or I need to change it. Um, and again, another thing Donna said is to just kind of look at it and go with your gut feeling. If you see, you know, you're, you're billing to New York City, you're shipping to Miami, and the IP address shows that it was in Utah, be vigilant. Um, you can use white pages. Do a reverse telephone number search. The, no, the telephone number that the customer provided, if it doesn't fit along with any of those three states, odds are you've probably got a, a, a fraud order on your hands. Um, another method you could do is if you're just if you're really not sure, but everything else still seems to check out, but you still have that gut feeling of I might lose money on this order. Call the customer. Ask them for the toll-free 800 number from the back of the credit card they used to make the purchase. Tell them you want to you need to have the credit card company manually authorize their card or to you know just to approve it. If they don't have anything to hide, they'll be more than willing to talk to you and even more ecstatic the fact that you cared enough to make sure that it was a legitimate purchase. Great. We've got a number of more questions coming in here and a few comments. Uh, from Lori Smith, I, I want to thank you. She said that sometimes she finds issues when people order items and express or second day shipping and the shipping is maybe two or three times more than the actual product cost. So that's a that's a very good tip and a good pointer, Lori. I appreciate you pointing that out to us. How about Thank from you, Margaret Lori. here? It says, I offer free shipping on certain items. If I drop ship something and didn't know it was back ordered when my customer ordered it 
and I email the customer, they are upset and call in. How would I calm them down? There's not really anything I can offer without losing money. How do you have your agents handle something like that so I won't lose the sale? That, that is a great question. Um, well, I can't guarantee that you wouldn't lose the sale. An, an option to, to offer the customer um, kind of a, 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 con, you know, a consolation prize, so to speak, is, is give them a discount on a future order. You know, so you know you can't offer them free shipping on the order that, that you're having right now because you're going to lose money on it. That's that's understandable, but let them know. You know, there's a delay on this. I'll have it in. It's it's going to be drop shipped directly from the manufacturer. You'll have it in three to five business days, and because of this, I'd like to give you 15% off your next order. That it does two things. A, it gives the customer a concession, and it it, it they they are essentially getting something for nothing in their mind. And you're almost encouraging and forcing a future order. Mm -hmm. Customers, in my experience, and I'm sure Donna and Greg can probably agree, both dealing with customers and knowing myself as a customer, we're generally understanding. I mean, unless there's a dire emergency that I absolutely need that product, most of us are willing to wait it out. And as long as you are offering something back to us, sometimes it's as small as an apology. Sometimes it might be free shipping, or like I said, 15% off or 5% off a future order. Okay. Absolutely. I love uh, coupon uh, codes. Another, uh, <laughs> another suggestion for Lori, and again, thank you, is that uh, what she does is try to offer express shipping at no extra cost if there's going to be a delay on a product or a back That is a item. great way to do it, Lori. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have another question here. This one's from Randy, and it says, I don't follow standard AVS guidelines. I understand that these are there to protect me, the merchant. However, I have never had an issue with that. I would like to think that my customers are honest. Do you suggest to follow the guidelines for international orders? Well, you know, it is it is nice to think that your customers are honest, and and I I, I applaud you for that. Um, especially if you're def definitely with international orders, if if you're not having a concern or in any issue with um, stateside AVS codes, as long as you feel comfortable moving forward with that, that's fine. I would still say trust your your gut instinct, if, even if it's something like a U.S. address that comes back with what seems like questionable information in there. It might be worth it just to pick up the phone and call. Even if your customers are honest, as I said, let them know you just want to confirm their purchase and, and you'll reassure that fact to them. But definitely with international orders, laws are different um, you know, in other countries than they are here. They're, they're not as protective to consumers and to, to merchants like they are in the United States. So I, you know, if you're getting orders from, you know, we'll say, you know, Puerto Rico or Cuba or Haiti or Japan or really just like anywhere that's just not your normal, normal customer base, check it out. It's, it's definitely worth the extra moment or two just to be sure. Yeah, well, some of the things, uh, Randy, that we have found in our, uh, in checking ABS declines is a few of the orders that were shipped by checking IP addresses. We found that the IP addresses were international. Um, down in a, a Central American company, but the actual ship to address was in Florida. And when we investigated it further, we found out that the Florida site was just a warehouse, just a pickup site for the packages. Would, the packages were then shipped further down internationally. So you got to be careful. It's not always just international addresses where you're shipping to. Um, I know you want to think your, your clients are honest, and, and we all do, and I'm sure probably most of them are. But the last thing you need is that one customer because that one customer can really hurt your business and can hurt your reputation. Agree. And you know what, Greg, we do, we see um, orders that, large orders, especially in, in our industry, I've, I've noticed it lately, electronics that seem to, seem to ship to port cities like, you know, Louisiana, Florida, um, New York even. A lot of times I've seen those go through they're shipped to a freight forwarding company and you never see or hear from anything again. It's gone in the wind and there's nothing you can do as a merchant to get that back. So yeah. my, like I said, my best advice is use your gut judgment. You know, nine times out of ten, that's going to be right. Um, you know, if you think it's potential fraud, just do that little bit of extra legwork just to make sure. And Peggy has a question here. She wants to know that uh, we mentioned verifying IP addresses and how do we do that? Well, Peggy, within the back end of your store, you can actually, it'll, it should show you, um, for example, I'll use a Yahoo store, for example, if you um, are on your merchant order panel, it will show you the IP address for where that um, order came in. 
you can either generally click the IP address, which is a hyperlink, or you can go to um, any reverse IP address lookup, like what is my IP or who is dot um, com, any of those. And you can um, type in the IP address. It'll tell you what region it's in. Um, it won't give you, you know, down to the exact city that, you know, that you're in, Shavertown, Pennsylvania, in the Solid Cactus office, row number two. But it'll, you know, it will say, okay, they're in northeastern PA. Um, and and that, that helps to, like we said, just so you know, you kind of get an idea as far as what state this is happening in. Um, if, it, just, it gives you a better idea. And, and Blight has asked a question here, and he's also let us know that after our anecdote about the Florida fraud, that about 95% of his fraud comes from Florida. Oh, <laughs> there's a lot of freight but, forwarding uh, companies in Florida. <laughs> yeah, she, she's right, and that's that's where you're going to get caught. Um, yeah. That's why you, you can't just leave it to international customers because no. they know ways to use domestic addresses to get the the merchandise out of the country. Um, and there are plenty Blight, of domestic addresses for them to use. Blight says, we actually charge the cards in shop. Can we still verify AVS and CVV? We don't have an online merchant account. Oh. Hmm. You know what, Blight? I think you can, but I don't want to give you the wrong information. So if you would, reach out to Donna Wirtz. Um, that way she can get your contact info, and I will look that information up and get back to you on that. Um, Okay. I know you can definitely at least still call, contact the 800 number if the customer would provide you the toll-free number for their financial institution that's on the back of their card. You can always verify it that way. Um, but I'm not sure if, about, you know, swiping and keying in cards, and I will find that out for you. Okay. Lori, even though she's given us some, some great information here, does have a question, too. It says, uh, with back orders, we usually put available at an exact date. Uh, or the date that it's due. And however, sometimes there are custom issues and it gets delayed. Customers get so mad they call and hold us to that date as a concrete date. Would you suggest we change the wording on the website to say estimated availability and the date? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, without a doubt. Yes, and 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 you know what? The moment that Lori, the moment you hear from your you know from customs or from the manufacturer or the shipper that there's a holdup, add that information to the site. You know, dear customer, while we anticipated on having this, this base in stock today, Customs has notified us it's going to be held up for three to five more days. Just keep them informed. But absolutely, mm -hmm. if, if customers are holding you to the absolutes that you're putting on your website, go a little bit vague. Yes. Yeah. Um, Peggy has another issue. She says we typically verify all orders where a customer uses alternate shipping with a costly shipping service. Um, and next day or two-day air, so for instance, However, recently we have had a rash of fraud where all the billing info and CVV was correct, and they used USPS priority, which is intractable. Oh. And ground. Yep. Now we verify all orders with alternate address, which causes a huge amount of work and backlog. Any suggestions on that? Um, one suggestion that I can make, um, one of our clients actually does this uh, currently. If you do allow shipping to alternate addresses like that, Put a, no, a disclaimer on your website that you know it, your customers have to have their alternate shipping address on file with the credit card company that they're using, and you can generally verify that as well. I know it seems like it's a little extra legwork, but it is protecting you. It's it's, it's protecting you, your reputation, and your just the financial stability of your business. Um, if you say, you know, I can call up my credit card company now and say I want to put my mother-in-law's address as an authorized shipping address. And no one will question that from here on out if I use my mom, my mother-in-law's address. So you can ask them to add that information in there, which if it's a fraud order, they're most likely not going to contact the, the financial institution of the card that they've stolen and say, hey, I want to add this address. So that's another good method to choose. And what some merchants do um, is they actually eliminate USPS uh, shipping uh, because it's not trackable, because they can't track down their packages. Yeah, absolutely. And you, and you know what? The, the way that UPS is even working these days, UPS is more willing to negotiate better prices. A lot of times it's better than what you could get from USPS, and it, it, it offers more value to your customer because it provides a tracking number, it provides insurance, it provides um, up-to-the-minute you know, data and information. Right. Okay. Now, Margaret is asking is, how would you explain there's an AVS issue to someone so that it doesn't seem like you're accusing them? I would very simply just tell them, you know, it, the information you entered 
for your billing address, it came back as not matching what the credit card company has on file. I would say, you know, did you maybe move recently or not update your credit card? A lot of times that's what happens. We see this a lot. Our virtual office team probably for two out of every three credit card issues they deal with. The, the scenario is a customer moved and updated their address with their bank, which is great. Their new bank statements are now going to their new address, but they, the bank or the customer never associated that new address with the credit card. And it seems really simple because it's just a bookkeeping, you know, a click of a mouse on the bank side, but that will cause a, a fraud order. So I would just tell them, you know, have you moved recently? Is it possible that you maybe inverted your billing and shipping address? Um, and, and that helps customers because I, it, they know that you're caring, they know that you look, and it, it helps to just reinforce the fact that you are providing just above and beyond superior service. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another question here from Catalina. And she said, what is that site for looking up IP addresses? You can, um, there, are, there are really hundreds out there. You can go to IPLookup.com. Um, you can Google search reverse IP address, and that'll bring you um, various. You can go to whois.com. Um, if, you, if, you know, if, you're, if, you're just, if you're new with IP addresses and you're just looking to experiment, you can go to whatismyip.com, and that'll even tell you what your own is. That way and you can kind of understand the locality of it, okay, you know, I'm in PA and this is telling me that my IP address is located here, so you kind of understand how that works. But really, if you just Google IP, uh, IP address lookup, it'll bring up hundreds and hundreds of sites that provide that reverse search for you, and, and, and they're all free. Good. Good. And, and Lori says that, um, Lori Smith has given us another comment here, is that uh, she doesn't really explain the AVS process to her client. She just calls and asks her the billing address associated with the card. It uh, helps them confirm the address and just explains that they might have it mixed up, which is a lot of what we do and a lot of what Katrina uh, had mentioned. So thanks, Lori. It yeah, sounds like a, you're following a lot of good practices here. That, that's, that's a great comment, Lori. And, and like you said, it, it just it reaffirms everything that, that you're doing and providing great service for your website. That's that's awesome that you um, you know that you confirm that with your customers and, and reassure them. That's great. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any more questions here. Uh, I hope I didn't miss anybody's question. If I did, I apologize. Uh, we're going to end the webinar now, but again, I'd like to show you that on the screen should be Donna's contact information, even if you'd just like to talk to someone in our virtual office team to see if your, your back-end systems are set up that in a way that's safe for you, in a way that's efficient for you. So we'd be glad to do that. Well, again, we'll make recommendations. It's nothing that you are required to follow. It's just what we consider our best practices and what works for our clients. So, <coughs> excuse me, please feel free to give Donna a call or email at the email address on the screen. And again, thank you very much for attending our webinar, and I hope it was informative. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.